Okay, so today we're here with a brand new space game. This is called Trigon Space Story. It's very much like FTL, if you remember that game. A very popular game, actually. I don't know how popular it is nowadays, but the game, back, back when it released at least, and for a few years afterwards, I enjoyed it very, very much. Now, Trigon is what I would consider a modern take on this. It's got uh, much better graphics, for starters. And here we are anyway, we're going to jump straight in. We've got our uh, crew. We'll have a look at a bit more detail on that in just a moment. We've got our ship here. As you can see, there are some additional ships. These aren't available just yet. Uh, hopefully they'll be available after another playthrough. Now this is a very basic ship. It says it's a bit beaten up and battered. At any rate, we're about to jump in here. And here we go. This is our first adventure. Now, I haven't played through this particularly much, just enough to get a bit of a feel for the overall mechanics. After shaking off another Venator patrol, you are trying to understand what's going on. The local communication hub makes it clear that there's a bounty on your head. It would be a good idea to find a safe place until the dust settles. Your friend Ronnie from the asteroid belt knows best not to go to ground. So we need to escape and we're going to find our friend Ronnie. Our first mission is called Something is Up or Something's Up. So here's our ship. We're floating through space. Lovely background there with some pretty, rather pretty um, nebula and other background visuals. Inside our ship, we can see the various compartments or modules that we've got. This here is the hyperdrive. It's got Daniel uh, controlling it. Over here is the O2. That's the oxygen supply, obviously. This is the airlock controls. Uh, what's over here? That's the shield controls. Our weapons controls. Quite sure what this one is. This is down here. That's our sensors. And this obviously is our uh, pilot room. The bridge, I guess, the cockpit. And it is being piloted currently by Kirill, who is our captain. Or Renegade Admiral. So this is the person who's in charge. Uh, if they die, it's game over. So we need to keep them safe at all costs. But of course, we also need to keep the ship safe. We're going to go through some of the other bits as we progress. So here we are in the map. The galactic map. So quite a lot of different areas to visit. Each of these are different sectors, as you can see. Quite a few sectors, including the central uh, core of the galaxy. But we're starting off here. Um, up on the top, we can see we've got our main quest. We've got some side quests. We got completed. Nothing's completed just yet. And of course, something's up, which is what we were talking about. It's in the system of Arrakis. A very, very nice name for a star system. I wonder if they find any deserts there. We've got to wake our way from Al Alcade. Okay, Alcade, I think. Um, well, there may be a couple of different routes. As we highlight over these different uh, star systems, we can see the route they will take. So if we go to Muzim, we can see there's a route to Ancha, then to Tabit, and then to Arrakis. Um, not sure what the best route is, but all of these look like they've got something going on within them, as you can see depicted by the red um, icons above them. So, Grimium. I suppose it matters. One, two, three. We've got four jumps that way. Probably yeah, looks like most directions we're going to have to uh, go with four jumps. I'm going to see what this icon is all about, and our ship is going to hyper jump straight there. So, uh, very quick a visit to the previous star system. Loving the big fireball down there, comet, or perhaps a planet vaporing, vaporizing its uh, atmosphere, being perhaps a little bit too close to its local sun. You receive a request for a courier job in the system. The package doesn't look big, and it needs to be delivered somewhere nearby. You might want to get the details. So, basically, as we fly through on towards our destination, we will uh, get other events going on. Sometimes missions, sometimes we may be intercepted by enemy ships. Good day to you, Salkai. We need the ashes of our colony's mayor to be delivered to his homeland. Can you manage that? We think your ship is suitable for such a mission. Now, they're very trusting, aren't they? Help transport the Atari ashes. Attack the colony. Refuse. So, um, we'll take that. Thank you very much. I thought you would give it... I thought you would give up the job like a typical vermin. I'm glad that you're not like that. Have a safe flight. We got a delivery. I don't know when we've got to do that, but that comes up as a side quest. Uh, funnily enough, it's back 
in Alcade where we come, so that's easy to get to. Obviously, um, nearly jumped by mistake there. So nothing else at the moment going on within this star system, but the problem is we do get resources used. Now our crew over here, we can see um, down the bottom there, they use two parts of food, two points of food per day, and 25 points of oxygen per second. Up here, our supplies are generated to two units each turn, but they consume six units each turn, so we're slowly going to go through our food here, because obviously each crew member is using two units of food, so this will, will need to be restocked, but you know what? We're going to go back to Al-Qaeda to deliver that. That parcel, maybe we'll get some uh, benefit for doing so. You're contacted by the, lovely word there, Taratikons, in the system the Atari have sent you to. They declare that the Atari ashes belong to them and demand that you hand them over. Oh, lovely. You send the ashes to the Taratikons without asking any questions. After a couple of minutes, you discover that the ashes contained contraband and that the Atari had smuggled through you. However, your frustration, frustration quickly turns into joy as the Taratikons share their technology with you. So that worked out quite well. As you can see, uh, if we'd been intercepted by someone else caught smuggling, it may not have gone quite so well, but we've got some uh, drone replicant. Drone replicants help you create and activate your drones during a fight, and we've got a uh, different weapon. Not that we've got room to weapon, room for weapons. We can see weapons and whatnot, I believe, over on our cargo hold in the management menu. So uh, the weapon that we just got, the mining cutter, we could actually replace down there. there. We can see this has got hull damage of 3 points, shield damage of 10 points. This is 5 points to the hull damage, so... A bit of a give and take, but I'm going to keep the weapon I've already got. We can put that down there, actually. Enough we can actually use that, but we can see our food supplies are already starting to dwindle. I don't know now if we're going to have enough to make it, but let's, uh, let's see what we can do. You never know. Right, we're going to jump straight through this system once we've uh, cooled down. Oh, I thought that was going to last a bit longer. Right, there's a trade station there. We're going to head to this trade station. I want to get some food. Now we're consuming it pretty fast here, aren't we? Right, hello there, Softy. The name is Rack Rackhillaret. I sell everything my mates collect from the nearest stars. Get your butt over here, and we'll haggle like civilized sentience. The terms are favorable, and even and you even get to stay alive. Bloody good. So station is here. And we're docked. That was quick. Got a shipyard, we got a trade, and we've got the bar. Let's have a look at the bar. Right, so I, th I assume that these are crew that we can hire. Uh, well, these look like aliens. Got the dock, maybe robotic of some type. Got an engineer, pilot, another medic, and a shield operator. Okay, but I don't think we've got enough uh, currency to hire any of these. So let's go back. But what we want to do, the reason we're here is to trade. Hopefully we can purchase some food. Supplies of food. Supplies are food used by the crew to survive. Right, so uh, let's have enough for a few turns there. 32 sounds good enough for me. Now we can buy some other things over here. Scrap is especially important because it allows us to upgrade our ship, but we should get some of that on route, on journey. Prometheus rocket launcher, rare. Another Prometheus rocket launcher. How does that compare to our that current rocket launcher? This does 10 hull damage versus... It doesn't tell us. Am I looking at the wrong thing there? Thunderbolt rocket launcher. Why? Right, I see. So it's based, the damage they deal is based on the rockets that's equipped into them. What does this actually gain us? Quicker reloading time, perhaps? Reloading time 10. Reloading time 15. So is a higher number faster or lower? That's not quite 
quite sure there on that one. I'm not going to chance it yet. We haven't got a lot of currency. Let's take the food and go. Let's see if we can get our ways to... I'm going to go to Ancha because it looks like there's pirates there. We're back to this system again. Well, we're going back and forth a lot here, aren't we? And we're going to jump pretty much straight away and try and get ourselves to that, that rocket. Or oh, assuming it allows us. Upon arriving in the system, you can see an unmanned Venator ship and hear the sound of combat protocols being activated. Now, the Venator are obviously the enemies of the game. And already we are uh, in combat now. Combat is going to be a bit of a problem here. We can see this ship very weak on its hull, very weak on its shield. We're going to target the shield generator over here using our weapons. We are going to get in the fight. We'll see how it goes. We'll do a couple of rounds. If it's no good, we will use the hyperdrive to run. Now, the game is set to automatically pause currently. You can have no pause if you want, but it's set to automatically pause when combat happens and Right, we can see that has done quite a bit of damage. Now, we're going to send Daniel into the uh, shield to try and help these keep regenerating. And we're going to target the uh, shields one more time. Don't think the missile thing has reloaded, is it? Maybe. We missed. Right, the shields are down. I think. Now, the handy thing here is they've got no crew aboard, or it doesn't seem so. I don't know if you can actually see enemy crews, actually. But let's take down the um, their bridge. One more shot. Hopefully this will not miss and it will uh, do it. There we go. Nice. So we should get some reward for doing this if it's only, even if it's only scrap. You destroy the ship and grab everything you can before leaving the system. We've got 97 credits, 22 scrap, uh, 3 supplies and some fuel to make hyper jumps. Actually quite interesting because uh, what is our supply of fuel currently? Getting quite low. Made a bit, a few too many hyper jumps early on. Right, so looks like we've actually powered down doesn't it life support module is on fire so you're gonna go and need to fix that daniel oh no well daniel's got no oxygen now he's probably going to die if we're not careful oh no daniel's dead this isn't going well at all is it adam's up next can you repair it in time adam doesn't look like it does it come on come on come on come on come on come on just about. Right, so what we're going to do now is we need to power the med bay. And to do that, we're going to need to take energy away. Right click on any of these. Left click on a module. It uh, powers it. Got three units of power there. We can right click to remove power. That puts it into storage here, which we can then use to activate a different module. So we now need to get Adam into the uh, med bay. Actually, there's a... Uh, Uh oh, we might be able to save them there. Looks like I missed an opportunity there. Now, it's going to be a lot harder to deal with this without, um, with only two crew members, obviously. Not going too well. But that is the trouble with these type of games. They can be very, very uh, risky. But that makes it all the more, um, rewarding when you actually succeed at the task. So... Adam is healing up here. We're going to need to get him back to the uh, hyper jump room, I think. Or we can jump. Or can we jump without him being in that room? Okay, well... We are all over the place a bit. So it seems that the best option, probably, when you first play through, is to go straight to the asteroid, rather than trying and doing a side quests at least initially during your flight you encounter a distinguished looking ship its hull is seemingly made of crystals and minerals the captain hails you and introduces himself as star order crusader 
He asks you, what's the most important thing a crusader needs on their voyage? A crusader needs honor. Once you lose it, you can never get it back, says the crusader, and to eject something from his ship. You find what it was, it turns out to be a load of scrap for your ship. When you're trying to fathom the meaning of it all, the crusader disappears from your senses. Nice, we've... Well, that's actually quite a lot. Nice. So, uh, our guys have leveled up here. Unfortunately, though, the other dude is still dead. I wonder if they're still there. No, they're completely gone. I wonder if we could have saved them. Does this need repairing, actually, this room? We will let Adam do his stuff. Try and get our ship back to uh, a reasonable reasonable operative state. Now the hull up here you can see is also damaged. I assume as this, soon as we don't seem to be able to repair this uh, right here, we have to get to a station to uh, repair that. Right, let's go put him in back in the uh, hyperspace room and We'll continue on our way. Right. Two more jumps to Arrakis. We're nearly there. Well, one advantage, I guess, with the crew guy being dead is we're losing using less uh, food per turn. A human colony is asking for help. There is a uh, meteorite threatening to hit them. You have to deal with it as soon as possible or the colony will be obliterated. Now, the yellow option here is dependent upon certain uh, requirements. So in this case, we've obviously got weapons, which enables this option. Uh, some other times, it may be relevant to some other module or skill that you actually have. Slice up the meteorite with the lasers. The laser is very effective against the meteorite. You quickly slice it into pieces and save the colony from destruction. What's more, the minerals can be used to improve the ship. We've got some more scrap and we are getting more fuel as well, just in time. Upon arriving in the system, you see an unmanned Venator ship and hear the sound of combat protocols being activated. Well, you know what? Didn't really want that, so uh, this time, this time we are going to try and run, I think. Unless we can damage its weapons. Come on, you can damage its weapons quickly. Quick, quick, quick. Is he going to do it? Take out the weapons. Come on. <sighs> Not working too well. So, we still cannot jump yet. The hyperdrive is charging. We probably would have been better off... Um, targeting their shield. Our airlock system is just about to fail. But why can I not use this um, rocket launcher at the moment? Not enough power, perhaps? Cannot work that one out. I was hoping it would be quicker to, you know, take down their weapons. But it hasn't. Come on, we want to get out of here. Have we lost control of our weapons? Yes, it's not looking good, is it? Hyperdrive con charging conditions are not met. We are in a bit of a mess now. Right, let's get this dude over here to go and uh, fix the weapons. We're going to have to get the captain to do something as well. Come on, you're going to have to go fix the shields, otherwise we're going to be in a right mess. Actually, if the captain goes in there, does this increase the speed at which the weapons are fixed? It looks like it does, but it's not helping us because... Everything is breaking. I think we are about to explode because uh, we've lost our weapons here. Let's see if we can actually try and get out of here. Hyperdrive, the captain and the bridge is not operational. We will get the engine room fixed and then get back to the bridge, but I don't think we are going to make it, unfortunately. Not going to last long, no, we can tell, we can tell. Let's get to the uh, bridge. 
And well, this one didn't go entirely well, did it? We are, we are finished. Wow, that lasted a while. Not. Okay, so your captain is dead. Statistics. So next time we will not try. Um, we will not try to do side missions before we've got to that uh, asteroid. Let's try again. Now it's obviously going to be the same uh, scenario here, which it is. Ronnie from the asteroid belt knows the best of how to go to ground. Something is up. Right, this time it's not Arrakis that we need to go to. It's yet Posteria. Now that is the best name ever for a star system, isn't it? Let's see how quickly we can get there. One, two, three jumps. That's the best route, I think, by far. We're going to head directly there. The nearest casino station, which you're to plan to bypass to avoid getting into trouble, is asking for help. They're paying good money, so you turn the ship around and set an approach on course. Tereticon welcomes you, codename Groupier. Our nearby branch requires a new stock of plan chips. Send in a delivery request. These are a chance to rob the casino. Oh, why do you keep giving me these uh, temptations? Alright. We're not doing that mission at any rate. We are moving on to uh, the old posterior the old butt system. You don't know what is waiting for you on the other side. The signal is too complex and unclear to decipher, but the risk may be worth it. The local system is a graveyard of ships. There is a huge number of massive hulls from different ages of this galaxy. It's an amazing sight to behold. Might be a good idea to explore the place. Let's see what happens. You decide to switch from the signal for a while and search the ships for different errors. You find a lot of useful gadgets for flying, maps of different systems and old weapons. Some of your finds will only do for scrap, but at the same time, your crew has become more encouraged for fresh adventures. Okay, well, you know that works out fairly well. Their morale is higher, perhaps? Yeah, is it is higher. And at last, we are going to make it to the destination to see old Ronnie, our friend from the past. On your way to the asteroid belt, it becomes clear that there is something wrong here. The stations are silent. No ships in view. You notice strange emissions on your sensors that emanate from a waste recycling module. Right, where is everyone? I need to find Ronnie. This Ronnie in hell. I need to find Ronnie and this whole mess mestat. Well, I read that one really well. Engineer, send an experienced engineer to examine the place. Send one of your crew members to examine the place. The engineer can go and do that. You send an experienced engineer to figure out everything on site. The engineer walks through the station along its technical tunnels, describing to you strange triangles on the walls. Later, he finds a Terrachicon in an irradiated location and brings it on board. Right, the asteroid, so Terrachicons, I assume I'm pronouncing that correctly, are obviously uh, AI, robots of some type. The asteroid turned out to be a slaughterhouse. The answers are hidden inside a lucky ticket. I assume lucky ticket is the number, the name of the Katagron. According to the signs on its body, its number is 213114. It'll be hard to turn it on. Half of its brains was burnt out. You need to find someone who can restart it despite the ban. It would be nice to find a Teatricon that has already reconsidered its life. It looks like you'll need to go to a pirate station. Yeah. There are no other places where you'll be able to find a Tadricon which can turn another robot on for money. To the Pirate's Den is the next mission. Okay, so... Into the Pirate's Den, where do we have to go for that? Here, I guess? Al Shani, I don't know, all the way down here. Okay, so we're going to go back in that direction. Oh, found something interesting here. Greetings, Salkai. I trade in this system to feed our poor colony. I offer a good exchange rate for resources. Atari resources are the best. 
Oh, so this is station. You know, that looks more like a, a portal or a jump gate or a stargate or something like that to me. But yeah, definitely a different looking star system to the previous one. So, uh, where are the icons? We've got the bar. And we can trade. And we've got the shipyard. Let's have a look at the shipyard. Send your crew members to, tele to the teleporter to board the enemy ship. Stealth module. Throw chamber. And a drone control module. Useful stuff. Now, have we got anything useful that we can trade? Unfortunately not. Because you know what? I was thinking we could go hire um, another crew member to replace poor old, was it Daniel? Who died? Actually, that wasn't on this, uh, that wasn't on this playthrough, was it? That was on the previous playthrough. So we don't need to worry. <laughs> My short-term memory playing tricks on me there. Um, but we will, I think, buy some uh, food while we're here. Let's get 20 units. And I uh, think we should get some fuel. Well, the fuel is very expensive, isn't it? That would do big chunk of our money gone we've only got uh, 440 credits left so that was close to half our credits let's continue on our way let's hope we can get there without any uh, engagements with hostiles oh a peaceful system for once hey okay, let's Alashane Alashane I'm not sure if I read that correctly anyway we have arrived. The pirate station. They are usually disguised as being uninhabited. If it hadn't been for your old connections, you would have had to look for it much longer. Approaching the station, you begin to feel a sense of adventure. The station is in chaos, gambling, forbidden pleasures, illegal goods. Somewhere in the mess must be the Tytricon hacker you are looking for, but where to begin your search? Head out to play a game of poker, take a walk around, talk to the smugglers, Buy a lottery ticket, let's talk to the smugglers. The local smugglers are quite outgoing. After the change of government, they were liberated under the under an amnesty of any past legal problems. One of the Rakai smugglers invites you in. You approach the trader with caution. You have heard that Rakai become more sociable and accommodating when they are away from their kin, but you keep your hand on your holster. Nevertheless, come, come, good friend. Rakashan doesn't bite. Hmm. I am an honest Rakai trader, a regular exchange. You give me something, I give you something. The Rakai explains to you how the trade is done and calls it surprise mechanics. A bit like a loot box. Lovely. You can buy a weapon at an absolutely bargain price. However, you will never know beforehand what weapon you're going to get. Right, we can only actually refuse, so we don't get many options. There, you refuse to buy anything. I wonder if because we don't have enough money, probably. You refuse to buy anything and ask where they maintain their surprises. The Rakai gives you the address of the Tytricon mechanic. And you head there. Great. Right, so at the address, you find a small workshop of an old Tytricon. He immediately figures out why you're here and demands a pretty penny for a lucky ticket. Alright, check the price with your engineer. Your engineer is shocked at the price. He raises some good arguments and proves that the repairs could be done much cheaper. The Tatricon reluctantly agrees and offers to help for next to nothing. Lucky Ticket bounces back. It tells you about the event of the station. Two Venator ships enslaved almost everyone there. Anyone who resisted was killed on sight. The lucky guy regrets having committed suicide. The very thought that it feels regret about a successful suicide sounds odd. However, it didn't want to lose its memory unit, so it chose to burn itself in the recycling module where no one was likely to stick their nose in. Popo, what a name. Right, so we've got a new unit. This dude is coming with us. And we have leveled up. I assume they're coming with us. Whereabouts are they? Ah, I see they're down in the, uh, in the um, airlock. So let's go put them in the shield area for now. Do they actually give us any bonuses? Good, good at repairs are they average not a little bit better than repairs than the others the others only uh, have one point in repairs this guy has 
1.5. Nano machines and natural born ace are its uh, skill sets. Let's have a look. Right, so we can select these. Uh, can't do anything else with them at the moment. Nope. And on our ship, we can use some scrap to actually uh, improve some things here. So we're going to improve our shields and we're going to improve our weapons. And what we got here? That's our reactor. Provides all the ship systems with energy. So you know what? It sounds like that's probably a smart move to repair that. Actually, we can't. Or can we? We can't. A shame. A little bit short. Maybe next time. Right, so we've upgraded our gear a little bit. Uh, what's the plan next? Lucky Ticket is a great guy. He will trace back everyone taken from the station, which means he is now, which means now is the time to go into pursuit. We're going to the Antares system. Okay, so where is that? Am I missing something here? Oh, it's right over here in another sector. Okay, so before we go there, we're going to go here to do that uh, mission that we've been requested to do. Our fuel is slowly dwindling, but, you know, we're not doing too bad. You approach the casino station. They haven't contacted you yet. Should you notify them of your arrival? I think we should. Thanks for the delivery, courier. We are constantly experiencing the chip shortages. Bloody pirates have flooded all the systems. I do hope the new rain will send the Venators our way sooner or later. The new rain is the uh, ruling, uh, the ruling government, I guess, of the galaxy. I'm already submitting your reward, so we got some credits. That's a lot. We got some fuel, much needed, and we got some food. Okay, so we are doing pretty good. But that said, I think. Oh no, we are getting. Hell of damage here. We need to get out of there. But that said, I think that is where we're going to leave it for this particular video. It gives us a very, very quick insight, a very uh, brief look into the uh, Trigon space story, which I think is uh, looking rather neat, isn't it? It's available on Steam right now. The link is available in the video description if you do want to check it out. I'm um, fully planning to come back to this for another video, so maybe we'll pick this up. Hopefully not too far away. Alternatively, if you'd prefer to see this as a live stream, I will be uh, streaming um, Saturday. I was originally uh, streaming, going to plan on streaming Microsoft Flight Simulator, but maybe we could live stream this instead. So let me know in the comment section below which you'd prefer to do, and just maybe we'll go with uh, that option instead. At any rate, that brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.